Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today I'm talking about unofficial pressings versus official pressings from my collection. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist we put together every week, and the Patreon page. So make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So right off the top, I want to acknowledge that yes, I know that these unofficial pressings are not legally made. They are in violation of copyright laws in most countries. These are pressed in countries where those laws either don't apply or those countries don't follow those copyright laws. But, uh, you know, I, the, the way I kind of justify it is, you know, am I going to pay, you know, $50 for an unofficial pressing versus, you know, three to $500 for an official pressing, which the artist isn't getting paid from either one of those sales. And as long as I've been buying these unofficial pressings, my rule has always been if and when an official pressing becomes available, I'll 100% of the time buy it because I, of course I want to support the artist. And of the several dozen uh, unofficial pressings I have, I probably have maybe, you know, 30 or 40. There is a handful of them that that's happened with. And, uh, you know, like I said, I always want to go out there and buy a copy and support the artist. So whenever I'm buying an unofficial pressing, it's always kind of a crapshoot because you don't really know, A, where these things are coming from, and B, where you know where they're sourcing the music from. I've got some official, unofficial pressings that sound like, the best way I can put it, hot garbage. Like it's, it, They're almost unlistenable. They are so bad. But I've got other ones that, and I've got uh, several I'll, I'll talk about today where I've got an unofficial pressing, I've got an official pressing, and I can't really tell the difference between the two of them. They're, they're done so well. I will say over the last couple of years, it's gotten harder and harder to find really good, high quality copies uh, of albums, bootlegs or unofficial pressings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, there were a couple of distributors I could you know, go to and be pretty, pretty sure that I was going to get a good copy. But over the last you know, year or two, most of them have stopped selling these unofficial pressings and uh, gone to you know more of a traditional storefront where they're just, you know, selling official copies of albums like like I guess they really should be doing, but, uh, you know, so I've, I've, I've started having a harder and harder time finding really good copies, but so far I've been pretty lucky. With a lot of these unofficial pressings, the biggest thing to kind of, the biggest way to tell the difference between an official pressing and an unofficial pressing is generally the album cover. Uh, so I've got a couple of uh, copies here I can show you. So this is uh, Warren's Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich. This is the, the original U.S. pressing of it. And then you can see, I'll try to show you in the camera here. It looks really nice, crisp, clear picture. And then this is a bootleg copy of it, which I'll try to put side by side. It might be hard to tell in the camera here, but uh, you can see that there's it's there's a lot more of a, the, the lines aren't as crisp on there. It's, it's a really blurry picture. It's kind of zoomed in, if I can get the glare from my light off of it. Yeah, let's try, I'll try to put them side by side there. You can see it's it's kind of zoomed in. It's kind of off center. It's not the greatest looking picture. It sounds really good. It sounds really, really close to original pressing. But that's one way, like if you're in your record store, because there's a lot of record stores that list these not as bootlegs or unofficial pressings. They list them as European imports. And that's kind of a, a you know really quick way to glance at it and tell that uh, you're not dealing with an official pressing of an album. I will say real quick that with this Warrant release, uh, Music on Vinyl reissued it last year, and it might be kind of hard to tell you also, but the, the, the Music on Vinyl version isn't blurry, but the color on it is just a tad darker, which, you know, a lot of those 80s albums, when they do get repressed, you tend to get that because a lot of times, you know, the, the label or the band will have a hard time finding a really good high quality version of the album artwork to use on a repress. So generally it doesn't look blurry like the, that uh, unofficial pressing does, but sometimes it will be a little, like this is just a tad darker, like so you probably can't really tell on the camera, but in person you can tell it's like a half shade darker than the, than the original pressing. I also have the music on vinyl reissue of Cherry Pie by Warrant, which looks great, sounds great. This is, like I said, this is the reissue, like beginning part of this year or late last year is when that came out. This is probably the easiest one to tell because if you look at that one, you should be able to tell even on my camera how blurry <laughs> that, that uh, bootleg copy is. And this is also really funny because uh, this is a gatefold and if on the inside of the gatefold is 
a really questionable picture. Like the, the the gatefold, I don't know where they got any of the pictures on the inside of this album from, but uh, it doesn't even go along with the, the album artwork. I also have a couple of unofficial pressings where if they were sitting in a record store, you probably wouldn't be able to tell a difference between the unofficial pressing and an official pressing, unless they were sitting side by side. The The first one, this is Wish by The Cure. Great album, was out of print for years and years and years. A couple of decades, it was, it was out of print. So this is the unofficial pressing. Looks great. It's not a blurry image. The, the color is darker, but it's not dark enough to really be noticeable. So if this was sitting in a record store, record stores could probably sell it for a lot more than what I paid for, for this bootleg copy. I think uh, I probably paid 60 or 70 bucks, which is a lot for, for uh, unofficial pressing. But when you consider official pressings go for several hundred dollars up until it was just reissued. But, uh, you know, the, the record stores could sell it, you know, as a import and people probably wouldn't even notice a difference because, like I said, you walk by the store, it looks like an official pressing until you put the official pressing next to it. And you can see the blue is a little darker than on the bootleg than it is on the official pressing of it. And that copy of Wish is something I've noticed with a lot of other unofficial pressings. Uh, I've got uh, Balance by Van Halen is another one I've got where the, the volume of the album is noticeably lower than what a lot of other official releases are. But with, with Wish, with Balance, they sound great once you turn them up. The, the, you know, there's no distortion of the volume or anything like that. So overall, I think they still sound great, but they, they had like an overall lower uh, total volume. Another album I have that uh, if it was sitting in a record store, you probably really wouldn't be able to tell if it was uh, official pressing or unofficial pressing unless you really looked at the album cover. But uh, that's GNR Lies by Guns N' Roses. It's an album that uh, has been really hard to find. It's gotten harder to find. The band, because of the song One in a Million, will never reissue this album. But if this was sitting in a record store, you probably really wouldn't be able to tell unless you really looked in. If you look closely at this picture of uh, Slash up in the corner, it looks a tad darker than it really should. But if you look at the official pressing, you can tell, even on the camera there, you can see that the, the, the unofficial pressing is definitely a lot darker, or color is a little different than the, the, the official pressing. Also, I will say that you know they weren't pressing GNR Lies on colored vinyl back in the late 80s either. But I will say this copy of GNR Lies versus the official pressing that I have. I've played them side by side, back to back, on the same turntable, set at the same volume. I really had a hard time telling a difference between each copy. No, the, the unofficial pressing sounds that great. I do have several of these albums that were never available on vinyl, so I'm pretty sure, I, I, I can almost guarantee that these were all taken from digital sources, but they were mastered in a way that they all sound great. I play them all pretty regularly. The first one, this is a Chateau Disaster tapes. So this is an album by Jethro Tull that they recorded back in 1972. Never, never were available on vinyl. It was released as part of Nightcap, which was like, uh, I want to say late 80s or very early part of the 90s when they released. It was only available on CD. So, like I said, I'm pretty sure this one came from a digital source. It sounds great, though. I play it pretty regularly. It's one that uh, I think that I've only seen that that unofficial processing or that bootleg, I think, twice in my entire life. And I, I made sure I grabbed a copy the second time. I also got uh, this one just recently. This is Hard Candy by Counting Crows. I don't think this was ever available on vinyl either. If it was, it was like a super limited run. It goes for for a lot of money. But, uh, you know, it's one that, uh, like I said, I'm sure it came from a digital source. It also sounds great, though. Like I said, I don't have anything to really compare it to. I don't have a, an official pressing. The only thing I've got is the CD. But, you know, you compare it to a CD, it doesn't sound like you could tell. I've got uh, a couple of Logic bootlegs that I could tell were taken straight from a, a, a rip from a CD and put on vinyl. They don't sound great. That's not how these sound, though. All these I'm showing you today, these all have really great sound quality. Another one, great album by Counting Crows, This Desert Life. This one I don't think has ever been available either. Uh, you know, same thing. It sounds great. It looks really good. Really good. I will say that the the cover on Hard Candy, it might be kind of hard to see on the camera though, but it is a little blurry, but not terrible. But the cover for This Desert Life, it looks flawless, man. It looks like a, a it looks like an official processing if this was sitting in a storefront. And the last one I got is one that I've been looking for a long time. I don't care if it was uh, official processing, unofficial, whatever it was. I wanted to get a copy of this. I love this album since it was first released. But that is 4 by Blues Traveler. And this is the one where 
I held a copy, an official pressing in my hands a couple of years back. I want to say it was over $500 that the store wanted for it, which is just astronomical. I couldn't spend that kind of money, regardless of what the album is. I don't care if it's Dark Side of the Moon, which is my favorite album of all time. I could never pay that much money for an album. I really can't. But the the this is unofficial pressing. One of the guys in the Yvonne Lynn Facebook group actually tracked down a copy of it for me. Sounds great. The the cover on it, like I said, with a lot of the other ones, you could tell, you know, the the cover art had this like blur to it. But as you can see with this one, you know, the lines are all crisp on it. It looks absolutely fantastic, and it uh, it sounds just as good. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Make sure you drop me a comment down below because I'd love to know what you guys think of unofficial pressings or counterfeit records, whatever you want to call them, bootlegs. The the word is, has become kind of interchangeable. I know for the longest time a bootleg was, you know, a live recording that someone bootlegged for, from the show. But, you know, I think people are now, you know, in 2023 kind of use the, the word all pretty in, interchangeably. But I, I call them unofficial pressings. I know I, I have called them bootlegs before in the past, but... I've kind of gone back to the unofficial pressing tag. Now, let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys have any of these? Do you guys think it's, uh, you know, that you're ripping off the artist, which I, I understand that, that side of the argument because, you know, the artist isn't getting paid for their, for their music. But the way I kind of justify it and look at it is, you know, if, if Blues Traveler wanted to make money off their album, they would get this damn album repressed. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's really up to the bands. It's up to the labels. And when it is, when it does get reprossed, I will absolutely buy a copy of it. I don't care if it's a, you know, super deluxe edition for 150 bucks. I would still buy it because I want to support the artist. But let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all we got. Until next time, keep all spinning. Peace. Peace.